Alright guys, Satchgrub here back again today, hope you're all enjoying your Wednesday today is, and um, yeah, today I wanted to talk to you a number of topics, mainly focusing around Crimzigs versus Eggs, had a little bit of um, back and forth on Twitter last night, and I thought it was a pretty interesting topic to discuss, because of course Eggs across time in Call of Duty has been really the big villain, Crimzigs was a villain as well, alongside Eggs at times, back in the day on the Complexity, Evil Geniuses lineup, then of course he was on Opta Game for quite a fair bit of time, and uh, during that time of course not a villain by any means unless you won an Optic fan, right? And Crim6 was destroying all your teams as happened during the Dynasty period. And now he's trying to turn his persona back into a villain. Um, Aix, of course, being the traditional Call of Duty villain, is, uh, has maybe got some words to say about that and exactly the way Crim6 is going about it. So we'll get into that in a few minutes' time. Like if you guys enjoy, subscribe. If you are new, as always, I would greatly appreciate it. First of all, we've talked about Bad Moon Talent a fair bit. And uh, they have picked up Joe DeLuca, Merck, to the to the talent roster. So pretty interesting. Of course, they've had a number of players. And uh, we really don't know what's going on with Merck this season, whether he'll continue to be a caster, whether he'll continue to be, you know, go back to the analyst desk or exactly where he wants to end up this season. But, um, you know, Facento is uh, the CFO, I think, of this organization. So pretty interesting. We talked about them for a fair bit, but I thought I'd bring this to your guys' attention Clayster says yesterday, we got an update to the game, but it didn't fix a lot of things that we were hoping it was going to fix. Um, and as Clay says, I still don't understand how the Sky Cam free UAV up to every death. If you've been um, if you've been playing the game, you will have noticed this, especially in Search and Destroy. You die, the player, or the, the camera effectively in third person hovers around the player who just killed you. You get about 10 seconds of free information, which is pretty much ridiculous. Completely breaks the game because the guy on the other team has no idea that he can be watched, right? Um, big issue right now. Now, uh, that wasn't fixed in the thing, and as Josh says, they f they got to fix spelling mistakes. I think they changed the trophy system. I think it was uh, misspelled or something, so they made it correct. Uh, whereas, um, <laughs> you know, this a major issue they hadn't got rid of. Also, um, uh, Dave Mickner and Joe Seacott, they said that the glitch with this the CDL settings for Search and Destroy was fixed. So effectively, there was an issue where when you went to activate Dead Silence or any of the, um, the field upgrades or whatever exactly they're called, it, it wouldn't work work or it was accidentally banned and it was meant to be allowed. However, as it turns out from this video that Turnup does, if you guys pay close attention in the bottom right hand corner here, in the CDL setting, so he has his uh, dead silence ready to go, He's just about to go and pop it. This is just in a private match, and uh, as soon as he pops it, completely disappears. Doesn't get any use out of it at all. This maybe isn't happening all the time, because uh, David Mickner goes on to say here that, um, so yeah, and so Magad does this tweet, fix misspelling of trophy, and Dave Mickner says, fix, your, fix rule sets in Search and Destroy where field upgrades were disabled. Now they should be enabled. Magad says, you sure just charged and used a field upgrade using the CDL recipe, um, but clearly in Turnup's case, that hasn't worked in all cases. So again, a bit of an issue. It seems Seems like Infinity Ward fix stuff doesn't actually get fixed. Wanted to run through this as well, um, to do with the the prints, I guess, as they're calling them, in the kill feed, effectively, where it would say, like, player promoted, someone avenged you, someone saved you, however. I didn't really mind that, but I think it's been annoying some people, especially, like, snipers and stuff, they want to have nice clean feeds. Makes a lot of sense, and, um, you know, they've got another patch coming later this week. Today was an emergency one, that was yesterday, I guess, for critical fixes, um, but again, didn't seem to clear up that much. So I wanted to talk about this as well. To my understanding, this is talking about Nameless on his podcast, and um, I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, so I don't know exactly what he said verbatim, but to my understanding of what people are saying in the comments, Nameless effectively said that the prices for this year make sense in the context of um, the event that's being put on, and he thinks it's worth it to be paying that much. We talked about it a couple of days ago, right? You're probably paying $200 for a good seat at the front for a weekend's of course, on top of that, you've then got to play accommodation, you've got to play travel, you've got to play for food, all of this stuff, um, and it'll bring the weekend up to a really high total for something that you don't even get to see a champion at the end of the weekend, right? Um, and yeah, it's an interesting situation because, of course, Nameless has incentives here to stay on the right side of uh, history, I guess, because uh, otherwise you're you're risking your, your career and the, the job that he has at Activision, so it certainly makes sense. I can kind of see his logic, right? They definitely need some return on investment, these teams. But at the same time, I think it's it's a real worry right now that the tickets are being priced so high 
And I really worry who's even going to be attending these things, especially because esports fans have a, a real affinity, right, for getting stuff for free. If it's available on Twitch, we'll watch it for free. If, for example, let's just throw this out there. I might make a video at this point uh, down the future. But what if you had to pay $4.99 or something to watch the entire season of the CDL? Like, would you pay that money? What if it was $4.99 a month, right? Every other sport, pretty much, in real life, in real sports, you have to pay some subscription to watch. And that's the only way that you actually get a functioning ecosystem. Right now, in esports, more generally, Generally, we don't really have to pay anything to watch stuff and uh, I would promote you guys to subscribe to a stream or to promote something especially you know, maybe buy some merchandise buy uh, buy a jersey something like that to actually keep the ecosystem churning over because it is a risk right now um, that the way things are going because everyone is uh, is set and as it has been to, to get stuff for free interesting topic of discussion i'll probably save that for another day um but i, I see why the roi needs to come out of these these tournaments but i'm not exactly sure it's going to happen wanted to run this past you guys as well so lion man made this graphic right here so to follow up from what happened before just talking about the potential for stack cards, right? And you could have some really cool ideas here, like Fantasy CDL. You could choose a team. You could have a league card. You could get prizes if you do well. The, the idea of like a week three prize or something is really, really cool. If you had a good place in the standings, you could party up with your friends, get fantasy points for each of your players, depending on how well they do. Some really, really cool ideas here that would be nice to see going forwards. So let's talk about Crim6 and this ache situation as well in a little bit of detail here because I thought it was pretty interesting. Yes, we talked yesterday about Crim6 saying that I'm all for fans supporting whatever team you like. That's dope. But because you support one doesn't mean you have to bash or, um, you know, bash anyone and anyone else anyone, everyone else. The core community needs to change this, make the scene even better. And I thought this is an interesting point from McCullum. And he goes on to say in another tweet, Dick Crim6, to say like, um, player versus player rivalries is fine, but team versus team rivalries? Not so sure about that. Which is an interesting comment to me, given that most of the rivalries in normal sports are team versus team. Man United, Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea. Of course, these are examples from Premier League football, because I understand that to the best of my, of my knowledge, right? Real Madrid, Barcelona, all this stuff. Um, but it's like, uh, I'm sure they there's plenty of other examples around the world as well. So, and McCollum goes into, or Sid, whoever, goes into a bit more detail. They're talking about you've literally been trying to get all their fans to hate you with a passion. It's, so it's kind of unfair for you to complain about it. Um, and, you know, he goes on to talk about cult following and stuff in just a second here. thought this is very interesting because Crim6 has tried to paint himself over the last couple of months since joining the Dallas Empire. He's talked, of course, trash of his former Optic Gaming teammates and trash of the org more generally. Remember he did that tweet that he was like, I'm going to put all these Optic jerseys in, in the trash or whatever um he talked about that stuff so he's trying to become a villain in the community people who were optic fans are gonna oh you know crim six like not too sure what i think about him anymore um stuff like this he's trying to get that sort of persona going but then he starts complaining about stuff on twitter and maybe that's a bit hypocritical right so crim six says cult following incident number 27 an esports team can give you a personality optic basically gave you a personality for free and trained you how to actually have confidence don't forget that so these are the kind of fans that uh, crim six is trying to rile up with his statements and trying to get into that kind of villainesque persona right and then it comes back with pretty much some straight facts thanks for uh, milton and martin even for pointing this out to me every time i see these tweets i lose full you didn't mind this for five years when it worked in your favor don't bitch about it now this has been a thing the whole time because of course eggs has been the receiving end of this for ages largely because of his own doing right he's tried to become a villain and be that type of guy um but you know crim6 has experienced the positive end of this from his perspective for the last several years and it's interesting to see that um he's now maybe having got a little bit of backlash he's trying to either capitalize on that to get more engagement or he's genuinely um you know, slightly slightly upset i'm not exactly sure which one i believe um uh, probably more on on the former but still it's interesting the kind of tweets that are going back and forth here and uh panny p still raving supreme as the the biggest villain in the scene for my money this is a little bit of discussion on reddit that i thought i'd go through as well so you know there are some occasions that that crim has tried to tell fans to chill this is what i talked about yesterday really that i didn't really see too many examples of crim six when the fans were on his side going into other people's streams and barraging them with hate or something after they um after they won a series or lost a series or whatever um and you know there may have been occasions where crim tried to tell the fans to chill but to my understanding it wasn't really anywhere near frequently enough for what i would maybe have expected to see what i would like to see especially from what crim6 is saying now i don't always agree with eggs but i respect this dude speak his mind crim is being hypocritical he was backed by this cult following too but didn't mind it back then also embracing this whole cringe villain thing also seems means embracing the hate how are you going to be a villain with no hate it's part of the gig brother and i think that really uh, does strike at the heart of this issue 
Let's go on to this then. Jeremy G Cod underscore analytics makes um, this post yesterday, which is very interesting. I'll leave this link down below, of course, talking about the distance that's going to be traveled per team in the CDL this season. So this is the graphic. Let's just make sure this is the correct size. I think that'll just about do. And um, it's pretty interesting. So effectively, it talks about CDL 2020 distance traveled by team. And uh, they make an assumption here that Los Angeles, the, uh, the London Royal Ravens are based out of Raleigh. And I think that's how you made it pronounced. I'm not really sure. Or Paris Legion based out of Los Angeles as well. But of course, these guys are going to be flying all over the place because they'll be coming back to their home games and all of this stuff. So very interesting to see this distance travel. This isn't something that you'd really see in the past. Um, typically, the teams would be based in their home situation. They'd play online tournaments. They'd fly to the league for their um, for their few series over that couple of weeks, but they would stay in Columbus, Ohio for that entire time. Then they'd go back to where they're, they're based, where they practice. And then when they had to fly to a Dallas or a London or a Birmingham or wherever the event happens to be, then they fly out there and do the event. Then they fly back, you know, no problem. They do that a few times a year. Not a big deal. However, this season, the flying miles are uh, enormous, right? Like Paris Legion, even if they are based in the States, they're going to be flying like 72,000 miles per team over the course of it, like flying um, to events, then back again. Now, it's possible that if they're doing back-to-back -back weekends, they might fly to Paris, for example, play their uh, tournaments there, play their two matches or whatever that they're playing that weekend, then stay in Paris and be based there for a bit, maybe do some fan signings, and then fly on to London, for example. But I'm pretty sure that they'll have to fly back to the States anyway, so it probably doesn't make too much difference in terms of the mileage, whether they're flying all the way back to Cali and then onto the next destination, or whether they're just flying straight onto the next destination. In terms of mileage, it's relatively similar. So you're still seeing some, um, some crazy high numbers here in terms of mileage. Very interesting. Toronto Ultra has the least, which I guess makes sense they're based in Toronto a lot of uh, cities up in the north shouldn't be too far away and also it depends largely on where your matches have been organized for right Los Angeles Gorillas flying a long longer way and uh, the Paris Legion than the Los Angeles Optigarve depending on where their matches are based and all these kind of things interesting stats I'll leave a link down below of course a couple of things to mention then before we completely finish our Parasite says himself Spacely Ferro Profezi and Sparta looking for an organization to represent in this year's CDL challenger portion of competition every single player on this team has the time to be in the CDL and will be this year or next contact Spacely Business at gmail.com place top four in the first 2k before picking up Profezi and then won the last while only dropping two maps if that matters um, and just a couple of things Jared that's Nagafen and also Spacely, their contracts with Genji finished up yesterday. My time with Genji was amazing. I'm extremely grateful for everything they did to us. Excited for what the future holds. And Spacely says a similar thing. Officially, an unrestricted free agent. Huge, huge thanks to Genji for everything. Best organization I've been a part of. Shame they had to duck out of Call of Duty. Um, but that's uh, that, that's effectively what franchising entailed. We knew we were going to lose a lot of organizations. Uh, it's just disappointing that they had such a poor result at Champs, given they were such a great team throughout the course of the season. So yeah, that's the video for today, guys. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new. As always, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.